Hey, welcome to Learn How to Edit Stuff. It's your boy, Naughty and Sands, here for another exciting episode. I got sick in Vegas. We went to breakfast at this awesome breakfast spot where they had like community picnic tables and this little girl was open mouth coughing all over the table, all over the general vicinity where my food was. But that's not gonna stop me from teaching you guys how to edit stuff. Which brings me to my next point. Today's episode is sponsored by Umka Cold Care and the Joe Rogan Experience. Oh, hold on one second. Hello? The not Wait, the episode's not sponsored by them? Yeah, I have to blur the logos? All right, okay, bye. Sometimes you gotta blur people's <laughs> logos because they don't sponsor your videos. So today's lesson is gonna be all about blurring logos and tracking them inside of Premiere so that you don't have to do it frame by frame yourself. It's actually pretty easy. It also scales, which is nice. Was it the most creative pitch for today's lesson? Absolutely not, but it is useful. So open up Premiere, because we're getting started right now. All right, I've got Premiere open and I've got the clip on my timeline that I want to apply the blur tracking effect to. I've got two logos that I want to blur, the Joe Rogan Experience and the Umka Cold Care. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down here and click this little new item button and go to adjustment layer. Uh, make sure it's set to your comp size, 1920 by 1080, click OK. And then we are going to drag that down onto the timeline above the video clip that we want to apply it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the adjustment layer and I'm going to go to effect controls. And down here under opacity, there's this little thing called the free draw bezier, the four point polygon mask and the ellipse mask. Now these are the things that you're going to use to draw your mask around whatever you're trying to blur. So in this case, we could do the four points. So maybe we'll do that. This way is a little clunky because uh, you have to resize everything yourself, but we'll do it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set it to uh, right around the box here. And then check this out. You wanna make sure that you're at the very beginning of the clip uh, and your adjustment layer. And once you have your bounding box set, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna click this little button that says track selected mask forward. Now, if you didn't know about this, Game changer. I'm always trying to give game changers here, even when I'm sick, you know? We can't let sickness interrupt. All right, back to the game changer. Check this out, click that button, boom. And what it's gonna do is it's going to track that area inside of Premiere pretty well. And it scales and it will move, as you'll see here in a second. We're gonna do this in real time, just so you guys can see that I'm not pulling any editing tricks on you or anything. We're just gonna let it go in real time. Uh, as soon as I start moving this thing, it tracks pretty well. Um, without me having to do anything. My hands are off the keyboard, it's doing it all itself. So now we're gonna fast forward to the end. Brilliant. And then if we uh, zoom in here on our opacity keyframes here, you'll see that it's actually setting a keyframe for every single frame that the box is moving. And I didn't have to do anything. I sat back and drank my coffee and let the computer do all the work. So now what can we do with this information? Now that we have our box tracked. Well, the reason why we did it on an adjustment layer is because we can now drag and drop effects onto our adjustment layer and the effects will only take place inside of this box that we tracked. So for today's example, uh, go to effects, type in blur and go to fast blur. For some reason it's under a folder called obsolete, which Adobe, no, it's not obsolete. I use it every single day, idiots. So let's drag fast blur right onto our adjustment layer and we will come down and we will crank the blurriness up to, uh, I don't know, let's say 60. And you'll see that it blurs our box. Uh, we have very hard edges here. So now what we're gonna do is come up to our mask and we're just gonna feather it a little bit to make it a little bit softer. And then we can use the expansion to either shrink or expand the mask so it gives it nice soft edges. So that looks good right there. So let's play it back. Sometimes you gotta blur people's logos because they don't sponsor your videos. So today's lesson is gonna be all about blurring logos and tracking them inside of Premiere so that you don't have to do it frame by frame yourself. I mean, that's amazing. I literally didn't do anything. It took like 30 seconds, depending on how fast your computer is, obviously. It may take a little bit longer or a little bit, what's the opposite of longer? Shorter, that's the one. I am, <sighs> today's a struggle. Depending on your computer speed, it's gonna take either longer or shorter than what we did today, but I promise it will work if you just try hard enough. Again, you wanna make sure that the area is big enough to track because you could always expand the mask inward. So track a bigger area and then you can expand the mask inward to actually make that mask smaller. And also make sure the area that you're tracking is an area of high contrast. Today I'm using a white box and a black mug. Let's do the black mug next and let's see what happens. So you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing here. Uh, you can use the same adjustment layer again. You don't have to keep making new adjustment layers every time because this is just 
a, a dead layer with no data in it. So we can drag this right on top of our other adjustment layer, just like that. And we will do the same thing. I will come in here and this time I'm gonna use the free draw Bezier tool, uh, which basically just allows me to click and drag or click and click. I don't, I'm so sick, this sucks. Okay, anyway, I'm clicking around the mug and I'm just gonna draw a shape just like that. And we are gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna click track mask forward. All right, on my end, it looked like it tracked pretty clean. And in the instance that Premiere maybe doesn't get it right, uh, say I wanna come in here and it's I'm at this keyframe right here. And I'm thinking that this mask looks a little bit off. It's a little bit high for my taste. So what I can do is, as long as I'm on the keyframe that I want to adjust, I can just come in here and uh, make sure you get the little hand and you can just pull this mask and put it to wherever you want. And you may have to do that for a couple different frames. Right, um, so if I come in here, go to the next keyframe, and you have to click on the mask to uh, activate it, and then I can just pull this down a little bit. Um, Premiere will generally get it right, as long as you do it right in the beginning. Um, so let's see if this actually worked. We'll do the same thing, throw a fast blur on there. I'm gonna crank up the blur amount, just like that. We'll feather it, just like this. And I'm gonna shrink the expansion a little bit because the Joe Rogan mug is actually only in the middle. So we'll just blur the mug and I'll crank up the blurriness here. All right, let's check it out. Sometimes you gotta blur people's logos because they don't sponsor your videos. So let's go to the part where it scales. Check this out. For yourself, it's actually pretty easy. It also scales, which is nice. So you see that the kind of logo is peeking out from around the corners here. I don't really mind that very much, but uh, we could always just raise the expansion level just a touch to incorporate more of the mug and we can actually blur it just a little bit more as well. But the fact that it actually scales without me having to do anything and readjust the mask every time is actually pretty incredible. Unfortunately, you can't track text in Premiere using the same functionality, but doing things like blur or any color effects or anything like that on selected areas of your footage actually does really well. This is great for license plates. This is good for blurring people's phones if you don't want their text messages to be shown on screen. This is great for blurring uh, clothing logos on like hats and shirts, etc. The world is your oyster. Use the knowledge that you've learned in today's video to do your own cool thing. Blur your own logos. Client asks you, hey, you gotta blur this logo out throughout this entire piece. What you have to say is, you know, that's gonna take me a really long time and I'm gonna need some extra money. This is a really tedious process, frame by frame. You don't even understand. And then they're gonna go, you're totally right. Like, whatever you need. And then you just click your little play button and then you sit back and you drink your coffee from your unsponsored mug and life is good. Life's not good, I'm sick. Anyways, today's lesson probably blew some of your minds and I'm happy about that, you know? We're always trying to push the boundaries here and learn how to edit stuff. Uh, you can follow me on social media, at Naughty and Sands on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Those are just my personal accounts. I don't do any editing stuff there, but hey, I'm kind of a cool guy. I do cool stuff sometimes. Also, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also check out the vlog. See what happens when you get sick in Vegas at CES. I got drunk, my immune system. Oh, also, if you did watch the vlog, I'm not vegan anymore. I went to In-N-Out last night because I don't give a single f It was Friday the 13th. I don't even care. Stay well out there, my friends.